All right, I think we will go ahead and get started. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. As we move forward, this is a little bit different format, um, as everybody knows, than we've done in the past, at least for the October one. So we'll walk through this. Um, if you can unmute and ask the questions, feel free to do that throughout if you have questions. If you can't or don't feel comfortable, if you want to enter them in the chat, if you could do that, um, that would work as well. Amy's going to help me monitor the chat as we move through. And as we get closer to when we do the breakouts, we'll talk about that a little more too. So bear with us. This is kind of a little different format if I have to jump back and forth a little bit. Assuming my computer will move now. All right. So. Um, just a quick update. So the first part of this is going to be all group, everyone's together, and then we will be moving into our regional breakouts. But just a little update on summer horse opportunities. Um, I don't think this is any surprise that summer was not as we had hoped or expected, which was um, for some a bummer. Um, most county fairs were canceled or moved virtual. Uh, state fair and state horse show were canceled. So now on the positive side, we must think about kind of reimagining how do we work moving forward? How do we keep kids engaged? How do we continue our 4-H work in a positive um, direction when we're still not back to what we would have considered in the past as normal? Um, I know from conversations I've had with a number of adults as well as youth that there were a lot of different viewpoints on this summer. And I'm sure all of us are in a different place with COVID on what we think, what we believe, what we hear, what we know, how we feel. But I can tell you, um, there's a lot of different perspectives that came from the kids this summer. I heard some kids who were, I think all of them were in some respects disappointed. I think at least initially, you know, that, that was the initial. But they all kind of took it, moved in different directions. I heard lots of comments saying, okay, so we can't do this, that's disappointing. I heard some grieving coming from kids that it's sad, it's the worst thing, and I don't get to see my friends, I don't get to do this. But then I heard as the summer moved on, kids saying, you know what, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna use it as time to practice with my horse. There's no competition, there's no pressure, now's the time to practice. I heard other kids come back and say, you know what, I'm not going to practice as hard. I'm going to take this as a summer where I'm just going to connect with my horse. We're going to just be a horse and a buddy together, and we're just going to enjoy each other for the summer. Um, so I heard lots of different levels of things, and I think everyone was in a different place or has been in a different place at some point. So I think that's important to think about as we move forward as 4-Hers, as we move forward as volunteers, and thinking about how we keep moving these kids forward and engaging them, because they're all at different levels in different places in this whole thing. What we can do as leaders, volunteers, and 4-Hers, as we know, we're still in um, the midst of COVID, so we need to think a little bit differently and be a little more creative on how we move forward with all we do. So that's kind of how we're going to focus. We're going to celebrate some things today. We're going to talk about successes. We're going to think about ways that we can move forward um, throughout this and move us back into hopefully what we will consider normal. So the virtual training opportunities, if you weren't familiar with those, um, with COVID kind of being thrown at us and, and kids not being able to gather as county programs, we um, developed and thought and kind of brainstormed about how can we reach out to kids so they can at least continue to practice, enjoy their horse or work at home when they may not be getting instruction or they might be getting instruction, but they're all at those different places. Um, we planned and developed and launched 16 training videos. They were done by youth. They were geared towards new or beginner kids because they were fairly basic. Um, we had kids on our planning committee, which was awesome because the feedback they gave us about, you know what, we're not gonna sit and watch a 45 minute video. We've had enough screen time with distance learning in school. We've had enough screen time. They need to be short. They need to be some practice steps and we need to move forward. So just some statistics on that. We had 766 kids participate in the series at varying levels. Now we recognize that, that not every lesson appealed to everybody. The expectation wasn't that a child had to participate in everything. It was meant for them to pick and learn or try something new or really be able to focus in on what their interests were. We did have kids. We had three 
youth participate in every session, which was awesome. 16 weeks and 16 kids who did that. We did it um, through a series of Qualtrics forms. So every 4-H youth who was enrolled in horse and every volunteer who was enrolled in horse was sent a Qualtrics link each week. They were released on Tuesdays um, with a different uh, opportunity for training video. So they completed that Qualtrics survey. The video was embedded in that and they watched that. If they participated in the first one, we sent them a follow-up link, which was a second Qualtrics survey the, uh, two weeks later. So that second one really asked them, so you watched the lesson, you set some goals during that lesson, what did you accomplish? We got some great behavior change responses. Meaning some kids were super excited, like I finally figured out my turn in pole weaving. I finally figured out this. I learned this from this lesson. We had some really, really cool behavior change responses from some kids. Um, we've now had some requests for a second series to be put together, only an advanced series for the advanced kids. Probably same format, but they're really looking at more technical or more specialty type things. So we are right now thinking about that. If anybody has some interest in kind of reimagining that for the future, that would be cool. Um, so let me know if you're interested in, in being a part of that. The, all of these training videos are, um, we have loaded them up on YouTube in Minnesota 4-H. We now have a playlist for Minnesota 4-H Horse Project on YouTube in the 4-H group. So after this series is completed, which was last week, and after we finish kind of rounding out this, um, this next week, those will all be made public. Um, right now, they're not public. They're just uploaded right now because we were waiting till the series was ended. So all those, so we're looking at that future, that library. So all of you who are volunteers or if you're a new 4-H member, those will all be available. So if you didn't get to participate in them, you can go out there and pick whatever topic that you want to look at and learn some more about. And volunteers, it might be a great opportunity if you've got new kids in the program, if you have a rain out um, on a date and it was supposed to be a specific training, you can still connect with them, with those kids that way and be able to send them a link to that or say, hey, here's a training video. So since we didn't get to practice tonight, here are three things to practice at home until next week. So it's new opportunities, it's ways to expand our teaching opportunities and resources for kids. So we'll send out a message when those become available um, on YouTube. Questions on those training opportunities? The kids who stepped up or um, were asked to do some of those videos, I thought did an awesome job. We had just basically sent them some criteria about here's things to think about when you're doing it. And because the youth did them themselves, you know, it was from their perspective, it was a whole different experience we heard from from the youth instructors about, hey, it was a whole different thing to have to think about how do I teach this now and how do I teach this on video and not have someone in person to show. So the learning opportunity for those older youth and those youth who were the instructors was also a really positive experience from what we've heard from those kids too. Incentives. So as you've been waiting for, the incentives are gonna be sent out to the counties. So we promised as a part of those virtual um, opportunities an incentive program where kids would could potentially earn things. Because we had so much participation, which was awesome, um, the State Horse PDC had allotted us so much money to spend for um, I'll say prizes, whatever, um, incentive items. And we feel that because right now it's um, virtual, obviously, and we aren't gathering, there's no way to get it there. We will be sending um, all of, if your county won more, or if, your ch if kids in your county won more than one incentive, so if you had two kids from your county, we'll be sending those incentives to your county extension office. And we will let you know, as well as them, um, that they're on their way so that you can make arrangements to pick those up. Um, we have a list. Incentive winners. Here is the first list. So if you want to look through that for a minute and see who we did use, um, we entered every kid who participated fully in, in the training, not in all the sessions, but had participated in at least one. We put them into a randomizer drawing because we had so many. 
we put them into a randomizer drawing. So then we were able to have the computer draw for us randomly. So you'll see also, I think it's pretty cool. You'll see the variety of, and not all counties are representative of those who participated because we only had so many incentives, but you'll see it, it's pretty cool that there's a variety of counties who also participated in this. Use some time just to look through the list. And oh, and I think I misspoke before. There were actually two youth who completed um, all. And these are the kids who participated in all 16 of the video virtual ones. We have Aiden Shepetsky from East Ottertail County and Anna Engen from Pope County who participated in all 16 of those opportunities. So way to go. They will also be getting an incentive. They will be getting a bag of, big bag of horse treats. May not be this flavor, but a big bag of horse treats um, for those two kids. Um, to thank them for their participation and their willingness to continue on in that venture and learn something new. So way to go to you two. Great job. Questions before we move forward. Anything in the chat that's come up? No, but people can unmute if they'd like to and ask the question if they have one. Yep, certainly. Okay, with no questions. So moving forward, um, we're working to keep everyone safe during this pandemic and we know it's not ideal. Um, there are guidelines out um, so we can start to gather in small groups if you didn't know that currently. Um, but they do, there is a number of requirements that need to be met. And to do that, you have to re request an exemption from your local extension educator. And there is a, it's a really brief training, um, basically as a volunteer, and there needs to be two volunteers who are trained um, to be able to host any um, in-person um, activity or event. And you're, like I said, your local extension educator can help you. And I'm just going to be honest right now, we don't know yet what the future is going to bring us and whether that will open up, whether that will close back down. Um, we just don't know. But right now we're following the guidelines um, that have been given to us. And just as a piece of information, we, we aren't the ones who are solely developing these guidelines. We have to, we have a, a task force on a much higher level than, than we're at um, that are constantly meeting with members from the CDC, um, the governor's office, the University of Minnesota, the infectious disease specialists at the University of Minnesota. So we are not the ones, it's in combination from a lot of different areas that are developing these guidelines that we have to follow. And because extension is a program within the University of Minnesota, we must follow um, the policies that are given and directed to us. So if you have an interest in meeting in small groups, and I believe the group um, is the size is 25 right now. Um, so if you're having a club meeting or if you can figure out how to do it or divide it into sections or whatever you want, it is, you can gather. And we encourage you to at least try to connect and maybe it's still on Zoom and that's working for a lot of people. But if you really need to gather in person, that is available, but you do need to reach out to your local extension educator and request what we call an exemption. <clears throat> and basically that helps us to track what's happening and ensure that we have volunteers in place who, who know what the responsibilities and expectations are. Renee, it's Larray. I have a question for you. Yes. So I know Crow and County, uh, <clears throat> our numbers are rising here. Mm -hmm. Is that something that our County Extension Office will be like, yo, our, our numbers are rising, like our high school, fifth through 12 is all distant learning now. Is that something that's going to be county by county to where they say, no, we can't do them in these counties because of increased numbers? Well, right now, it's not county by county as far as the policy goes. So we still have the 25. However, if a school district has gone 100% virtual, an exemption, I can guarantee you, will not be granted to be able to gather if it's in that area. And I know the reason that we are, you know, you think that some of the regional meetings, you know, have been relatively small and maybe they could be managed at 25. 
They're also not granting exemptions where people have to travel distances or gather from multiple counties because um, they just don't want to take that risk. So I know that if schools have gone to fully distance because of numbers, because that's why they close, then I know exemptions will not be granted in those areas. So, yeah, so they, so we don't, our policy is still the 25. However, that's the reason for the exemption um, process is we do kind of, we do look um, more locally then and make that determination. So even though it says 25, there's no guarantee that the exemption will be granted. Who grants the exemption, Renee? The exemption goes through four different levels. So initially your local educator will sign off and say that they've had conversation and they understand what the program opportunity is and that they would support that. So they just sign off and say, yep, we've had conversation. I know what they're doing basically. And we've talked through everything. And then it goes to their supervisor who then reviews it and says, or has, if they have any questions, they contact the local educator. And then it goes up to um, Jennifer Scusa, who's the Dean of Extension for final um, review and granting. And then it goes, actually the signature that comes for us is through the university, but it goes through Jennifer. So there's a multi-layer uh, process that reviews it before it's granted. But in all honesty, that time frame has been depending on what it is and if there's any snags or questions about it, it's a relatively fast turnaround. Like I would say 48 hours is what we've been seeing for most things, unless there are some catches. Local things have generally had a turnover of 24 hours. If they grant it, they grant it and you hear back within 24 hours. So it's not like it's a long, even though there's layers, it's a, it's a digital process. It's not a long, you're not waiting three to four weeks. Um, for those things, unless there is a snag or it's a bigger multi-county thing that we're trying to pull together, then it takes a little longer. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Okay. So opportunities that are coming. Um, we have been meeting as a group and we did a survey of some of you, we had great participation. I think we had close to 300 responses to the survey we sent out to 4-Hers um, asking if they wanted to see some hippology or horse judging or speech and demo, whether it was a contest or what they really wanted to see coming up because we know that some of those didn't happen at state horse shows. So we were trying to get a feel for what kids wanted. Um, obviously we didn't want to go to all the work to do it if there's no interest or we didn't know if it was a priority for them. So we did a survey to kind of find and what we heard back was that Hippology didn't want to see hip, most of the Hippology kids and actually horse judging as well, really didn't want to see the full blown contest as it's been at the state fair. So they didn't want to try and do that virtually. But what they did want to do was do a workshop and they wanted to think about encouraging new kids or kids who didn't know what Hippology was and then follow up a practice workshop session like an introduction type thing with a fun mini contest. So kids would get the opportunity to experience a contest, have some fun and learn about those areas. So we are looking um, for those and they are in the planning processes right now of getting some dates set. So we are looking for a Hippology workshop and fun mini contest slash practice. Same with horse judging and then speech and demo. It's really tough for them to do, you know, a mini contest or short notice contest. So actually they will be doing um, a demonstration and workshop and if you're new or aren't familiar, one thing that we did find out um, through talking with those people is we know that hippology, horse judging and speech and demo all happen at the state horse show. You do not have to have a horse that earns a trip to participate though um, in those at the state level. And that we understand was not clear for a lot of families out there. They thought that you only participated in those if you had won a trip with your horse. So know that these are contests and ways that kids can come and experience the state horse show without having earned a trip. And they're actually a really fun, engaging way um, to do that. So if you're interested in speech and demo or wanna put one together and there's not only individual, but team, you can sign up to attend state horse show and do that event down there. Um, hippology and horse judging as well. There are teams for those as well as individual opportunities. 
So that's just something that we have found that wasn't real clear. So if you can share that with your families um, and other members, it might be a great way that we can we can grow that program or promote these workshops and fun mini practices because they'll also be discussing that um, on those. And then kids will find out, you know, what is hypology? What is horse judging? And maybe I'm interested in that. So they're not going to be super long events because again, what we hear back from kids is we don't want to sit for a half hour or, I mean, we don't want to sit for half a day at a computer. So they're going to be more fun, but learning opportunities. They are looking at late November and December dates for these. Um, I will tell you, I'm guessing, or we think that hypology and horse judging will be on the same day at the same time. So you can do both at the same time and speech and demo. We're looking at either a Saturday or an evening, cause that'll be a little shorter uh, opportunity or event. So watch for those. Those will be being sent out those dates and opportunities for you to sign up and participate in. Question. Will the hypology horse workshop be virtual or real? It'll be virtual. Um, so they are planning st new stations as a part of that so the kids can actually to do them online. So we are reimagining and recreating that opportunity as well. Renee, so will those... Time. I'll be all honest. It takes time to rethink things of things that we've done in person and how we do them virtually. Um, and we know, you know, the more thought we put into it, the, the better the opportunity will be. But we know potentially, you know, we know there's always glitches when we move things from in person to virtual, but we do our best to, to think about those ahead of time and try and make sure that they don't happen. Hey, will those opportunities be emailed to horseless project members as well? They will. Yep. Okay. They will go to horseless horse and horse and horse members. They sure will. Because that's a great way for kids who are horseless, who may not have a horse to still be involved in horse and learn tons. So absolutely, great question. We are looking for a group to start thinking about a reimagining winter roundup for January, 2021. Um, I'm just gonna be honest and say, I don't think it will happen because of the overnight um, piece of it but it doesn't mean that we couldn't maybe manage depending. We don't know yet, I, I'll, well, we just don't know yet. Um, so we're trying to think about what could winter roundup look like for this year um, or a couple different plans, depending on if things open or if they close or what happens. Um, but knowing that we you know, start advertising that the sooner the better, we need to start thinking about what winter roundup might look like differently in January of 2021, because it's gonna come up on us really quickly. Um, so if you're interested in that or have some ideas, we would love to hear them. Um, let me know and we will kind of form a think tank around that, um, that for that opportunity that's coming up. So if you have kids, we'd love to have kids on it because they're the ones who are going to participate. So we want it to be a positive um, experience for them, but not saying we don't want adults either, but we really want to hear from the kids on what they would like to see for Winter Roundup. questions on that. All right. Bonus trips. I know it's been, it's a weird year, right? So counties continue to strive and provide opportunities for their youth during these challenging times. We know that things happen, whether it was virtual, things happen prior to uh, the shutdown, really. Um, and we had a number of applications. We did encourage that bonus trip applications still be submitted. And we have decided that we are going to be awarding the following counties bonus trips for 2021. So in addition to the year before, we are awarding bonus trips for next year, even though we didn't have a state trip this year. So what that really means is, yes, we will be adding a few additional um, opportunities to the state horse show next year and i'm making the assumption that it's going to happen next year um because those who didn't get to use their bonus trips that would have been this year's fair will still get them rolled over so yes we've talked about it we feel that we can manage the additional um, number of kids coming so and we wanted to really recognize people and during this time for those counties who did continue to you know 
they continued to work. They took the time, they put the application in. We encouraged everyone to still do that. Um, so, and the drum roll, I don't have a drum, but drum roll. Counties receiving bonus trips for next year are as follows. Aiken, quality excellence. Anoka, programming excellence. Benton, programming excellence. Carlton, programming excellence. Chippewa, quality ex excellence. Dodge, quality excellence. East Ottertail, programming excellence. Fillmore, programming. Hennepin, programming. Candy Ojai, programming. Mille Lacs, quality. Mauer, quality. Nicolette, quality. And Olmstead, quality. So congratulations to those counties for bonus trips for next year. Great job. Questions? Will there be another uh, opportunity to apply in uh, like May and June when the normal bonus trip applications are due on a normal year? We, so I will say probably <laughs> um, the state PDC, that'll be something on their agenda for the, the November meeting is to talk about because we need to manage and figure out how to manage Dan Patch. Um, there's a lot of things that need to come up on that. We are trying to continue to provide as many opportunities, you know, in the absence of state show this year as we can for next year. Granted, we know that it, it might make our show run a little longer into the evenings these days and, and that, but we really don't want to take away those opportunities from counties. So we're trying to stay as positive and keep counties engaged. So yeah, I would move forward and keep your counties planning, keep them doing things. Um, moving forward because it's going to be important that we keep kids engaged great question renee there's a question in the chat okay says here, how will the quotas be established for 2021 that's a great question and i don't have that answer yet okay um so so my so my gut would tell me um we haven't we haven't thought through that on state level yet my guess is because there was no um, participation, I'm guessing it's gonna go back to the past two years and with the addition of bonus trips. So, you know, because we obviously didn't have participation in county fairs this year, I'm guessing it will stick back with the two years previously. And then we have the addition of bonus trips, but I don't know that for sure. We have not fully um, discussed that. That's how my gut says that we're gonna end up doing it but I'm not positive on that, but that's a good question. Thanks for bringing that up. Counties won't lose trips, I can tell you that. Okay, um, another question is, so if we want a bonus at state, we get to keep that too? And so we get to keep state show one bonus trip and the county bonus trip? We gotta clarify what the county bonus trip is. I bet she's talking about the herdsmanship trips. Yes, we aren't taking those away. No, nope, those don't go away. We we would we our goal is not to take anything away. You know, if anything, if we have to add some, that's great. It just gives more kids an opportunity. But we really don't want to. We we won't take those away. No. She says it would be a, a letter from last year, so I'm not sure what. Well, oh, last year it would be last year's bonus trips, correct? Yes. We won't take those away, no. Nope, they will roll over in addition to these. So it'd be last year's bonus kids, this year's bonus kids, and possibly 21 bonus possibly. kids. Possibly. Okay. Other questions? So just a little update on state committees. Um, the Minnesota 4-H Horse Project is one of the largest projects. We have over 5,400 members and 600 project leaders in our project. The State Horse PD, PDC, which is our project development committee, which is the guiding kind of group um, that oversees and is advisory in nature and helps um, establish how things run in the State Horse Project. They manage the funds. They do all of those things. Um, they have, um, so each, hor each horse project committee 
in the areas below will be co-chaired by one adult and one youth who are appointed by the state PDC. So I just want you to know that these committees that are established are, a lot of them are working committees um, that help to get the work done. And I'll show you that list of those committees in a minute. I just wanted to give you kind of an idea that these committees are out there and the state PDC members can't do all of the work by themselves. So committee members for these groups don't have to be just PDC members. So I encourage you when you learn about these and find out, so these project committees, depending on what the committee is, so there's a really a variety and I'll give you an example um, when we switch over to show you those. These committees help to get all the work done that we do on the state level in horse. And there's a lot of work. There are a lot of opportunities, maybe some that people don't even know, a lot of things that happen on the state level, a lot of opportunities that we can't do by ourselves. There's only 22 members on the state horse PDC and they can't do it all themselves. So we really encourage you, if you have a strong interest, knowledge, have new ideas, that you um, ask and solicit and apply to be on one of the state committees. And I'm gonna bump it ahead. So the structure basically is state 4-H committee consists of between five to 15 members. So that depends on the committee. Um, some committees we know we need more people, some we don't need as many to do it. And it's really um, based to help get the work done that we have to get done to make the program continue. Any 4-H member or screened adult who's actively enrolled in the horse program can be a member of those committees. So it's not limited to um, state PDC members. Adults serve a two-year term with three consecutive terms and the youth serve one-year terms with no term limits. So what that means is um, if you, I'll use Winter Roundup as an example. If you're interested in Winter Roundup and you want to serve that, an adult would be on for a two-year term on the Winter Roundup committee. A youth would be a one-year term, but a youth can apply every year to be on that committee. The committee membership process, notice is sent out and applications are collected, which we haven't done yet because we were waiting for after this meeting. Um, the call for applications generally is till between September and October 31st, but because of trying to figure out how we do things a little differently, there's been a delay. Um, and then the selection, the state 4-H horse exec committee convenes and goes through uh, via distance through all those applications and they rank them based on the criteria that's, that's established, which I'll, I'll talk about below. And then we make that announcement between November 1st and November 14th of the committee members for those groups. So the exec board committee selection considerations. So I'm just gonna use Winter Roundup again as an example. If we say we want um, four adults and four youth on the Winter Roundup committee or five and five, whatever that might look like, the exec board would select those people based on the geographic representation. So we would prefer that people from throughout the state are appointed to that committee. So we have understanding. So when they're making decisions, we have representation from everywhere in the state. Um, decisions are also based on the skill sets needed. So what kind of skills do we need to help plan Winter Roundup? Um, willingness to participate. So if you say you wanna be on a state committee, we hope that you're willing to participate in the meetings and the activities that are scheduled to help plan that. So you have to be willing to commit. Um, it doesn't mean that you're driving every month somewhere. Some of the committees meet once a year, some meet five or six times leading up to an activity. So they're all a little different. Um, what are your motivations for being on the committee? Basically, why do you want to be on that committee? Um, what experience do you bring to the table for that committee? And then we're looking for that balance of youth and adults. So that's some of the criteria that they use to select um, who, are, who are part of those state committees. So the committees um, that are looking for members currently are the rule book committee, the Horse Bowl Committee, Speech and Demo, Dan Patch, Dressage. Now, Dressage is not a 4-H project, but there is a group that's been interested in seeing if we can move that into Minnesota 4-H. So they have done work in the past on thinking through that and developing some guidelines and starting that work, but it is not there yet. But if you are interested in pursuing that, that's an area. Um, horse Training, Miniature Horse, the 4-H Horse Library, Hippology, National Trips, Horse Judging, Horseless Horse and Horse Related, 
marketing resources. So if we have new ideas or ventures and how do we promote 4-H and what comes out of that, the t-shirts a couple of years ago were one um, and those were successful. So we'll probably continue. But if there are other opportunities that would, if you have ideas, that would be a group for you. Um, judges certification and training, Western Heritage, State Horse Show, Winter Roundup, Challenged Riders, Drill Team, and the Grants Program. So the Grants Program, if you're not familiar with that, um, there is a certain amount of money set aside by the State Horse PDC each year, and counties can submit an application to apply for a grant from them. Generally, those grants are um, awarded to counties who um, have some kind of financial match and that they can show whatever their op their idea is. So whether it's bringing in a specific trainer, whether it's an idea to grow their membership, whatever that might look like, there should be a way that potentially it's sustainable in their county. So if it's to grow something, how do how is that going to continue after this money is gone? And the state PDC has that grants committee and that committee is responsible for reviewing those grant applications and deciding um, if they're granting them to the county. And there's a set dollar amount. So when the money's gone, the money's gone. But if there's still money available, counties can continue to apply. So those committees, we're all looking for um, membership and that application process will go out, I'm gonna say probably in the next two to three weeks so you can watch for that. So if you're interested or if you have more questions about a specific committee, um, shoot me an email and I can send you kind of the, the layout. Each committee has a description of what the expectations would be for that or what, what the job responsibilities are um, as being a part of that committee. So questions on state committees. Renee, I wanted to let you know I shared the uh, link to the committee application. Perfect. So that's shared um, on the chat. If you're on by phone and can't get that, shoot me an email and we'll send it to you. Because I know there's people connecting in a variety of ways here. So I encourage you to jump on board and get involved because a lot of these things we need people to help and make decisions. So now it's time. So what will happen in the next few minutes is because we are um, doing voting for state reps and generally it's done in person by your region, we're gonna be doing things a little bit differently um, from Zoom this year. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask, oh, I forgot one upstairs. Um, what I'm gonna do is ask each of the candidates to, if you can turn your camera on and if you can't, that's fine. Just talk to us one by one. We'll have you just give a quick who you are, why you want to be on the state PDC, um, kind of a brief summary so all of us can hear every candidate. Um, how the voting is going to happen. And we had to put a lot of time and thought into how we do this. After this meeting, if you had registered to be a part of this meeting, you will automatically get a link sent to you with a survey. And that survey will have the members that you will be voting on in your region. So you will hear everyone's discussion tonight, but you will only be voting for your region reps. So in each region, you will vote for one adult and two youth. So as state horse PDC reps, if you're new to this, there are always two adults and two youth from each region. So we have the Northwest region, the Northeast region, the central region, the southwest region, and the southeast region. The reason we only vote for one adult is they are two-year terms and they're staggered. So there is someone going off, but someone staying on. So every other year, we change out an adult, where the youth reps are one-year terms. And I will tell you why they're one-year terms. They're one-year terms because we didn't want to discourage um, a senior in 4 h or to run for state PDC rep when they might have great ideas and be able to share a lot. Because if it's a two year term and they're gonna be leaving for college, they may say, oh, I can't serve it, so I'm not gonna apply. So the adults are two year terms and an adult can serve three consecutive two year terms. So at the end of their two year term, they can choose to be put back on the ballot to be reelected or they can choose to go off. The youth can choose at the end of their one year term to go back on the ballot and be reelected or they can choose to go off. So all of the people who are eligible are on the ballot. You will be, if you registered for this webinar, you will be sent a link after this to be able to vote. So if you have 
because I recognize if there are households who are all on this, I'm going to use Gretchen, you and Eliza as an example. You might be on one computer and logged in together because I see both your names. So you will get one link sent to you. Both of you can do that ballot separately. So if Gretchen was to go in and fill out her ballot and hit submit, and then Eliza can go in and fill in her ballot and hit submit. On the ballot, it will ask for your name. So you do have to enter your name. And the reason we do that is to ensure that there's only one vote per person, because we know that there are households that have multiple people and all of those people, if you're enrolled in the horse project or you're a volunteer, you have a vote. Does that make sense? So we'll be able to counter. Nobody will see your name and who you voted for, except for myself and Amy, my support staff, Amy DeGroot. So it is confidential. So it's not gonna be shared about who you voted for. The only reason we're asking for your name and it is required is to ensure that it's one vote per person. And we can track that based on county. Questions on how the voting will happen. Renee? Yes. Um, there's a question in the chat saying you can just run for PDC right now, question mark. You didn't have to apply or something beforehand. We did ask, um, you should have gotten an email earlier asking that you let me know ahead of time, like by four o'clock yesterday, if you were interested in running. However, at our normal PDC meetings, and the reason for that request, at, normally when we meet face-to-face, -face, you can show up that day and say, I want to run for office. The reason we asked ahead of time is because we had to formulate the ballot um, and know who was running and ask them. So I, I will tell you right now, if you are interested in running and you shoot me a message right now, I can add you to the ballot. I will not be able to add you to the ballot after now, um, like in the next 10 minutes. I can still lock in and, and add you to the ballot. So if you didn't by chance or you missed that email and you want to run for a state horse PDC position, um, shoot me an email. Actually, if you... Renee, I just text you the name. Okay. Do you need to know the region? Um, nope, I can look that up. Perfect. So I can add that person. So that's not a problem. Um, I will add that person. I just needed to get the ballot formulated as best I could um, prior to the meeting because it's going to be sent out immediately after. We are giving you till 10 o'clock tonight to log in and complete your ballot. And the reason for that is I know potentially some people are at work or they may not be on here or they might be um, somewhere else and not able to get on their computer if they're if they're logging in by phone until later today. So the ballot will stay open until 10 o'clock tonight. Um, and your new state PDC reps will be announced sometime tomorrow. Um, also, um, someone made a comment and said 4-H online only has household emails. So youth may not have gotten those emails. Um, we yes, I have sent out multiple emails through the old system, the new system. You might have gotten it multiple times, and the new system had a glitch in, is why we sent out another email the other day because it wasn't including projects. And um, so we were trying to do our best to get everybody notified. So if you didn't get an email, I'm sorry. Also, somebody's asking if there are any open slots that still need nominations for the central region adult. So Renee, do you know if there's any, any candidates for that? Um, I know, yes, the central has a number of candidates. Other questions on this? So expect, I'm, what I'm basically saying is expect that Qualtrics survey um, to come by email. So if you were on this and you don't receive it, let us know right away. Um, like by, I don't know, you know, by, by three o'clock today, if you can, let us know that you didn't receive it because we know there are some issues with emails. But whatever email you have for your enrollment email, which is in your 4-H online, that's what it'll be sent to. Or whatever, actually, it'll be sent to whatever you registered for this e for this webinar in, because we're going to pull that data off of here 
and send it because we know you got on here here with an email address so it'll be sent to this one hey um they're asking do youth vote youth do vote yep Renee, I have a quick question, it's Lorraine. Yeah. So when we go through and for the people who want to do the little speech, are you gonna do it by region so people know kind of who's in which region? Okay. Yes, and before we switch to breakout rooms, um, yes. And the ballot, yes, we will, we will, yes. <laughs> yes, sorry. Yes. Okay, another question, should new members not vote? New members have the right to vote, and that's kind of why we're going to do the introduction of candidates. So the candidate will introduce themselves and talk about why they want to be on the PDC. So yes, they're eligible to vote. I would take the position that if you're enrolled in the 4-H program, you're eligible to vote, right, Renee? That's correct. Yep. Any other questions before we get into introductions? Hearing none, I'm going to move um, forward. Oops, I'll do this. I'm going to jump out of the screen though, quick, and then I'll go back in when we split. So I can pull up the candidates' names. And we will do introductions by region, yes. So and I have a couple people who weren't able to be on here but sent me their information to read. So when we get to there, I will do that for you. I am opening here. All right, so let's start with, let's start with Southwest. So is Andrea Huffman on? Kathy Johnson. Kathy's not on, she's traveling. Did she send you her stuff? Oh, I'll have to look. Hold on. I think she did. Um, Ava Schoenfeld. Is Ava on? I'm on. Okay, so um, just a rundown before we get into it. So the Southwest, people running for office in Southwest, um, the adults are Andrea Huffman, and Kathy Johnson, and the youth are Ava Schoenfeld, Caleb Johnson, and Cassandra Gibbon. So Ava, I'm gonna go ahead and let you give your quick introduction. So my name is Ava Schoenfeld. I'm from Lincoln County. This would be my first time on the state PDC and I'd like to be on the state PDC because I'd like to be more active in what the planning behind course things that I go to. Perfect. Thanks, Ava. Caleb, is Caleb traveling with Kathy? Or is Caleb on? Yes, he is traveling. Okay. So Cassandra, I'll have to pull up their stuff here quick. Cassandra, are you able to be on? Sorry, can you hear me now? Yep. All right. All right, hi, I'm Cassandra Gibbon. I'm from Lac Parle County and I've been in 4-H now for about 10 years and I've been in the Horse Project for about eight of those. And as for some leadership positions I've had, I've been the Winter Roundup, on the Winter Roundup Committee for the past three years now. And I've really loved that leadership position just because it's challenged me a lot 
to plan a big event alongside other committee members. And I've really enjoyed that and I've learned a lot from it. I was also the 2020 Dan Patch runner up. And this past year I was rep for the Southwest region and I served as youth secretary on the state PDC. In my county, I've served in all the positions, the officer positions, and I've held right now, currently I'm president of both my club and my county. Um, I've also attended leadership conferences like AYHC and I've competed in both Hippology and Horse Bowl, which I've also learned a lot from. And one thing I wanna note just before finishing is that more than ever right now, I think it really is the older youth that need to step up just with COVID and everything going on right now. Um, the youth really need to be encouraged more than ever just because the platform we are on right now is virtual and just more than ever, the youth need to be encouraged and it shouldn't just be the adults encouraging the youth and stepping up. So in the end, I want to serve on the PDC again because I know how serious the impact in my voice is, and I would really love to lead again and represent the youth in my region. Thank you. Perfect. Give me a minute here. All right. Um, and Caleb um, was not able to join us. Caleb has served on, he's traveling. He, he has served on the state horse PDC. Um, he is very active in his county. He's done a lot of things. He has a good voice on the state PDC. He likes to um, be a part of the decision-making and thinks he has a good voice for other kids and being able to represent his region as well as other youth in the state um, and would like the opportunity to serve on the PDC again. Um, Kathy Johnson has served on the state horse PDC in the past. She um, also is in Southwest as an adult. She has served for a number of years. She's just finishing her second term. Um, so four years on the state horse PDC. Um, Andrea Huffman, I've got to pull up her application here. Give me one second. Uh, Andrea Huffman says, I have been a 4-H club leader for Minnesota for the past six years. Prior to that, I was a 4-H club leader in South Dakota for a horse-specific club for three years. Prior to that, I was a 4-H leader in Missouri to the to a horse-specific uh, horse <laughs> club for four years. I have coached horse bowl and hippology and horse judging teams in South Dakota and Missouri. I helped my county horse superintendents recently by doing showmanship clinics for 4-H members. One idea to promote interest and growth would be to attend local saddle clubs and barrel racing, sorting jackpots, and explain to families that 4-H has a variety of project areas kids could participate in. But if they wanted to do the horse project exclusively, they could. I think there is a misconception that kids um, have to do other project areas to experience 4-H. I have considered starting a horse project focused 4-H club myself. Due to COVID, we are restricted in participating in group gatherings this is the perfect time to be focusing on educational side of the horse project. Zoom meetings with trainers, presentations, reviewing hippology stations, trivia games to promote horse bowl are a few ideas I have to keep kids engaged. I ride and show horses myself. I feel like I can relate to the program as I would understand the reason for 4-H rules or regulations as they would most likely be similar to other horse association rules. 4-H is a great platform for kids to try new things with their horses without judgment. So many other kids in the program are learning too and they can see accomplishments and struggles others are experiencing and all learn from it. I think monthly, April through September, regional 4-H uh, riding clinics need to be offered so kids can learn from trainers and or clinicians. Many horse superintendents volunteer to help kids but they don't always have the experience to train these kids and horses. So for these reasons and others, this is why I would like to be on the State Horse PDC. And that's Andrea Huffman. Oops. Okay, I'm jumping back here. Give me a second. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. Could you uh, tell us which county she's from? Oh, good question. Um, let me pull that up quick. I have her application. Sorry. Andrea is from Rock County. Thank you. And Kathy is from Chippewa County. Ava, what county are you from? Lincoln. Ava's from Lincoln County. Caleb Johnson is from Chippewa County. And Cassandra, what county are you from? Aquaparo. Aquaparo. Perfect. So that's your candidates for Southwest. The adults, again, Andrea Huffman, Kathy Johnson. The youth are Ava Schoenfeld, Caleb Johnson, and Cassandra Gibbon. Thank you. We're going to move over to Southeast. Southeast adult, Gretchen Sankovitz. Morning, everybody. Um, I'm Gretchen Sankovitz. I am from Waseca County. Um, I have been on the state PDC board in the past, and I very much enjoyed um, the opportunity to lead and um, work as a team with everyone to help our state project become better. So I look forward to continuing that role and working with others to, you know, work through our, our, you know, virtual and, and hopefully eventually getting back to normal as, as much as we can. And so I, that's about all I have. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Gretchen. Um, for youth in Southeast, Eliza Sankovitz. Oh, no. Okay. Um, you have to unmute. No, I'm unmuted. Okay. Um, I'm Eliza Sankovitz. I'm from Waseca County, and I started on the PDC last year, and it's a lot of fun to work with the youth from all around the state and make decisions for our whole entire region and state and everything. Perfect. Thanks, Eliza. So right now we only have one youth and one adult running. So if there is another youth in Southeast, we would welcome them or an adult, but we definitely need one more youth. All right, moving up my list. To Central. Um, Central region. We have one adult running um, currently, and that's Mark Storm. Uh, Mark Storm has been a member of the State Horse PDC. He has been off for the last year because um, he had ser served his three two-year terms. He has been off this last year, so is eligible to rerun. Uh, Mark has served for a number of years on the State Horse PDC. Um, he also serves as the State Horse Show chairperson. He has been involved um, in, an, in county activities as well as state activities for a number of years. Mark feels that um, he, oh, I lost my place on here. Mark said he feels that he can contribute to the state, state horse PDC in a number of ways. He gives a historic perspective. Um, he has a great understanding of horse show when it comes to those kind of things and other opportunities that kids might be able to gain. He has been active in horse training. He is also the current chair of the judges certification um, committee and has lots of input and um, information that can be shared not only with kids, but as well as adults. And he feels that having a historic perspective, meaning has a lot of history on the state horse PDC, he brings a different perspective to the decision-making process. That is Mark, and he was unable to. He is um, on his way to Oklahoma for a, for a horse show. Central, for youth, we have Leah Goldaddy. Leah, are you able to join us? Yes. Uh, like Renee said, I'm Leah Goldaddy. I'm in 10th grade, and I'm representing Anoka County. A little background about me is I've been in 4-H for eight years now. I participate in a wide variety of stuff in the horse project, including Western Heritage, Speech and Demonstration, Horse bull, hippology, horse judging, 
pleasure games, horses, horse and clover bud, both as a participant and as a mentor. And I think that's about it. So I can represent a wide variety of the horse project, both individually and as a whole. I've had club roles as president, vice president and treasurer, which taught me parliamentary procedure and just professionalism and public speaking overall. At the county level, I am the secretary of my county's leader council. And I also play an active role in the social media marketing, which I would love to bring to the state PDC. I'm active in my horse committee. I always run the pre-fair meeting and I also started horse encampment at my county level. So that is just another thing that I've brought to the table, just being flexible with everything going on. I also lead horse training, horse this horse, um, and hippology and horse bowl practices. And I'm also involved at the state and national level in the Dan Patch Youth Leadership Program. And I've, this would be my second year participating at the state PDC. I know this year is a bit different than other years, but I'd really love to work on reimagining and developing new ideas to increase the opportunity for youth to participate and grow in the 4-H horse program. And some ideas I have for that in includes having like a regional wide um, in-person winter roundup event and speech and demo opportunities. And like I said earlier, I would also love to be a part of the marketing aspect and just getting more youth involvement overall. So if you guys elected me, I would actively and honestly represent my county and region at the state PDC and thank you for your time. Thank you, Leah. Paige Newcomb. Paige, are you Hi. on? Yes, I am. Paige mm -hmm. is also running as a youth in Central Region. Hello, everyone. I'm Paige Newcomb, and I represent Washington County. If elected, this would be my second year serving on the State Horse PDC. Last year, I was a Central Region representative, as well as the Youth Vice Chair um, beyond the PDC. Within 4-H, I'm a state ambassador as well as a county ambassador. Of all leadership within my club, and I'm the current county federation treasurer for Washington County. Beyond 4-H, I'm involved in AJPHA on a regional and national level. Within the horse project, uh, some of my ideas for helping promote uh, horse project and get our who is involved out there more is to be more active on social media. I was involved with the Dan Patch promotional videos, informative and infographics that were put out on Facebook and Instagram. And I feel continuing to use social media to promote Horse Project and get member involvement would be an amazing way, especially in this weird virtual year. Also with the virtual, I feel like, like I would bring to the state PDC a good perspective on how we can run events virtual as well as even attempting hybrid if regulations allow because through my state ambassador position, we've had several um, meetings and retreats that are in a hybrid format. So I could help bring that perspective. And thank you for your time. <coughs> thank you, Paige. Cassidy Kalka. Are you on? I am. Perfect. All right. So, hi, my name is Cassidy. I'm from Washington County. Um, if elected, this would be my first year on the Horse PDC, 4-H, and the 4-H Horse Project. I've held many officer positions in my club, pretty much all of them except for vice president, as well as I have also been a part of my county's Horse PDC Horse Camp Committee. I help plan um, my county's horse camp every year with scheduling as well as putting together all the herdsmanship groups. Um, I believe that these things have helped benefit the 4-H and the horse project because I'm just another leader in my county that can help represent the program and help promote it. Um, some ideas that I have for promoting interest and growth in the horse project are to make sure that people know that there are so many project areas within the horse project that don't involve having a horse. Um, as well as offering different clinics, either virtual or in-person, depending on like the regulations and everything. Um, mainly aimed to new people that are coming into 4-H or that want to explore the project a little bit more. And yeah, to promote the 4-H and Horseless Horse Project, um, you can connect kids 
by heavily promoting those projects that don't involve horses. So like Hippology, Quiz Bowl, Speech and Demo, and Horseless Horse, all these other things that they have so many opportunities to get involved in. So that way they can expand their knowledge and participate in those things without ever like needing a horse or like having to have that hand, hands-on experience with a horse. Yeah, I think that a main thing to promote leadership and herdsmanship would be like just to continue all the things that we've been doing in the past years, even if that's virtual this year because of COVID and everything, just that's another way to keep people engaged in everything and just to make sure that they're still practicing those leadership and herdsmanship skills. Um, another thing could include just different camps and clinics that I think would be a good idea to get new people involved and like just promote it and like focus it towards those new people to like get them in to the project. And I believe that just because somebody doesn't have a horse, it sort of pushes them away from the horse project because those parts that don't require a horse aren't as heavily um, advertised. So yeah, I just think that I would really enjoy helping out and just doing whatever I can to just promote and represent the PDC. So thank you. Thanks, Cassidy. Allison Morell, are you on? I am. All right. Can everybody hear me? You're a little quiet. Okay. Um, I turn my volume up. All right, is this better? Yep. Okay, sounds good. Um, hello, my name is Allison Morell. I'm from Isani County and I am in 10th grade. 4-H has been a huge part of my life ever since I could first join 4-H. It has now been 11 years since I joined in kindergarten and I have participated in almost all the different project areas, in the horse project and also in the project go and all of that, all those other projects too. But the horse project has been my passion and my most favorite project above all. I've participated so widely in the horse project at state level and at my county level by participating in horse bowl, hippology, judging, speech and demo, as well as competing in both pleasure and games, as well as making it to nationals at the American Quarter Horse Congress in both hippology and the speech competition. Ever since I was little, I dreamed on my making my way to be a better leader so that I could lead and assist others at state level. I have since strove to learn and develop my leadership skills by taking on whatever leadership and service roles I could. Because when I was little, I used to be quite shy and not very loud or talkative, able to project my voice, but now I've worked so hard on fixing those and developing those skills to make them better. And I have since been able to get loads of experience from being president of my course project, helping develop the project to be even stronger and better. And I've also been secretary for my horse project just this past year. Including that at county level, I'm a state for, or as an Isandy 4 H ambassador, and I just finished my term as secretary, and I've been selected to be as an Isandy county ambassador again for the third year in a row. At state level, though, I have taken that and taken that to the next level by being on planning committees for horse bowl and winter roundup. With winter roundup, I helped plan the event as with some other amazing youth and adult that are even on this meeting. If you attended Winter Roundup, you may have seen me helping with icebreakers, introducing speakers, walking around it and making connections with other Winter Roundup participants and also the old ones that attended too. I also took part in the presentations at the round table activity. I love to go out and meet everybody and welcoming new 4-Hers and even old ones are a, is a big part of what I like to do in 4-H. I also have been selected as the one of the 2020 Youth Leadership Award recipients after writing a resume and portfolio about how I used what I have learned in 4-H <coughs> to help me in my leadership and service roles throughout my time in 4-H. 4-H is super important to me, especially the horse project. I'd be very proud to be representing 4-H on the I can bring this able to improve and excel the horse project even more and doing what the 4-H slogan says, making the best better through the 4-H horse project. 
throughout my years, I found that many don't really know what 4 H is. And although even at my sports that I'm in, I'm always talking about 4 H, and many don't know what it is. So I find that even in the Horse Project, the Horse Project is a great way for youth to come and they don't have to have a horse in order to participate. There's the Horses Horse Project with Hippology and all of the different project areas in the Horse Project that you don't need a horse for. And I feel like if others knew that you don't actually have to have an animal for 4-H, that they many more would join because 4-H really is such a great experience and it has helped and taught me so much. And so we that could the things that I would bring can be done on Zoom or even just plain fun educational horse games. Sometimes you don't even have to have it be about horses. It can just be about yourselves and getting to know each other. I'm outgoing and I have a positive attitude and I would love to be on the PDC and to help at state level even more than I have been and also help with the other adults and youth that are on there. Thank you and I would appreciate your vote. <laughs> Shannon, Shannon Gretsch, if you could mute, that would be great. Our last youth from Central is Courtney Stanick, and she wasn't able to join us, but she sent me a video. So give me a minute here. I'm going to see if I can get this to play and share it with us. So hold on. Let's see if I can. Maybe. All right. Can everyone see Courtney? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Here is Courtney Stanick from Central Youth. Her, she made a video for this. Hello, everyone. My name is Courtney Stanick. I'm in 12th grade and I'm from Anoka County. Um, I am involved in horse judging, hippology, horse bull, drill team, training project. So when it comes to horse project divisions, I've definitely been around the block. Um, and I am interested in running for the youth representative role in the PDC for the central region, because I am wanting to get more involved with 4-H horse on a state level, because I haven't really gone much farther than county. I feel like I could handle the role because I'm currently the Anoka County Horse Committee Youth Vice President. So I feel that a lot of the tasks I'd be given to complete or the responsibilities would be similar. And if I've already dealt with them as a vice president, I'd be able to deal with them as a PDC rep. Um, but overall, I'm really wanting to get more involved with State Horse Project. And so I really want to join this committee um that's about it yeah thanks bye hello everyone my name is Courtney Stonic. I'm in 12th grade and I'm from Minoka County hold on that's not what um, I wanted to do I am involved there perfect all right that was Central Region. They have tons of applicants, which is awesome to see. So thank you, Central. So just as a rundown, Central Adult Running is Mark Storm. Central Youth are Leah Goldaddy, Paige Newcomb, Courtney Stonick, Cassidy Kalka, and Allison Morell. Now we will move to Northeast. Northeast adults running are Larray Schneider and Meg Sachs. Northeast youth are Susan Shore, Josie Kostick, and Alexa, or I'm sorry, I have that wrong. <laughs> I'm reading off my thing. Sorry, um, in the Northeast, the adults running are Larray Schneider, Meg Sachs, and Susan Shore. The youth running are Josie Kostick, Alexis Shore, and Emma Thompson. So we will start with Lorraine Schneider. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay, I'm Lorraine Schneider. Um, I This will be my second term um, applying for the regional rep. I served the last two years. I'm also on the state drill team committee and the state um, horse show committee. I um, am a drill team coach for the Crow Wing County drill team for the large freestyle. I've done that for the last three years. Um, very active with the youth, trying to get them to volunteer in the county and outside of the county, um, get their their skills up and, and working in doing different projects within the horse um, community. I guess that's about it. I was very active in all the different regional events, the state events, um, very active with the state or the state drill team. There was a lot of work that we've done the last couple of years. So we've worked really hard on that. That's about it. Thank you, Lorraine. Now we will ask Meg, are you on? Yes, I am. Perfect. I'm Meg Sachs. I am from Mille Lacs County. I have served on PDC previously and now have been off for a little bit. Uh, would like to come back. I've been very active in a number of horse project activities. I'm one of the 4-H volunteers that went from a 4-H member to a 4-H volunteer to a 4-H staff to 4-H volunteer. Um, some of the things that I have promoted within the 4-H horse project and introduced because I think we always have to challenge ourselves and our youth with new activities. Um, I introduced the winter roundup that we currently have, um, got that started years back. Also, hippology was one region activity that I also promoted. I am very active in the state bowl committee, um, serving as the horse project coordinator for that. I've been helped out with state show, have chaired that event a few years. Um, like I said, active on a lot of different committees, a lot of horse project activities. I think the most important part of our horse project is our youth. It's really important to promote our youth, get them interested in opportunities um, that they're interested or even new activities that they may not have considered before. I'm excited to see the dressage moving forward. That's another activity that we haven't done a lot with, with the 4-H. Um, one of the ways you may or may not have known me, I also chair the 4-H boot camp uh, that the Minnesota Quarter Horse Association puts on for 4-H youth. We always need to get out um, in other areas and encourage more youth to learn about the 4-H horse project. And so we need to like uh, Leah has said, reimagine how we reach out, be it virtual, small group gatherings, one-on-ones. It's really to our benefit and our project benefit to do that and focus on it currently. Um, one of the things I feel is during this COVID situation is that we're losing the interest of the youth. So we need to refocus on trying to bring them back to the project and do more things with them. And for those reasons, I would be interested in serving on PDC. Thank you, Meg. Susan, are you on? Okay. Hi, I'm Susan Schreyer. I'm from Crow Wing County. Um, I've been involved with 4-H for the past 13 years as an adult. Um, in the past two years, um, I started a new club um, over in the Crosby area as a club leader. I've been a part of the state winter roundup planning committee. Locally, I've been on the PDC, um, work with our, uh, with the drill team. Um, I volunteered with the horse PDC in the past four years with doing fun shows, organizing those clinics, project days. Um, my organization skills have come in handy with those events to make them run more smoothly and a lot, of less, a lot less stress because we don't want stress when we're around horses. Um, during this past year with COVID, one of the things that I have thought was really important is to keep connected with the kids. Um, not so much on the Zoom and do kind of more in person, get them outside, um, have them explore more of the outdoors again by just teaching them little things that they can be practicing. So taking those videos that were put out by the PDC taken them to the youth members that were interested in horse that their parents didn't have that opportunity to get them on 
but to take what we've learned and share. And I think that's really important. And um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to Winter Roundup, doing that different. Um, I've been thinking about that, so which has been kind of cool. So just keeping things quick online, give the kids tips, a project to do, and then move forward. So um, this would be my first time applying for a state position. Um, I'm looking at bringing new ideas to, you know, helping what was already in, you know, established in the program. So thank you. Thank you, Susan. Alexis. Hi, I'm Alexis Schreyer. I'm a junior in high school. Uh, this is my 12th year in 4-H and ninth year in the Horse Project. I've been a county AMBI for five years. Um, I've served as a secretary of my horse PDC for two terms, and I'm the current president of my horse PDC. I've served as both vice president and secretary of my county federation. I've held all office positions in my regular 4-H club, and I'm currently the co-president teaching a younger youth how to run a meeting as the president. Um, in my county, I've helped put on fun shows and clinics and other um, events to do with horses to reach out to youth. Uh, some ideas I have for promoting the interest and growth of the 4-H Horse Project is to promote all the options that you have in the 4-H Horse Project. Whether you have a horse or you don't, to reach out to everybody. And as a high school student, I'm around people who have animals or livestock, specifically horses that aren't in 4-H and choose not to show. And just hearing from them why they choose not to, to be able to bring ideas to change and to reach out to bring more youth to get them involved. Um, and then using social media to showcase different events that we have going on, whether they are virtual or social distancing. Some skills and knowledge that I've developed or gained and will benefit the horse project. I'm a really good listener and communicator and my knowledge of being a high school student and a youth and being around all sorts of people every day. Um, what ways can the 4-H Horse Project connect with kids and horses safely and efficiently? We can hold social distancing clinics outside, whether it's in the spring, because it's getting a little chilly outside now, um, or have smaller <clears throat> events in an indoor arena wearing masks. Um, and then we can hold virtual clinics too, whether we have a keynote speaker come in and just talk about different things that kids are interested in or um, have youth talk about different events that they are involved in to give more information and just an insight of that. And then for opportunities, we can hold training days for the different regions and hold practice shows. Like I know in the Northeast region, we hold the Northeast Livestock Show. I think it'd be pretty cool if we could hold something like that um for the horse to just have like a show where you can come in as like a practice show before you have your county fair and just to get you prepared for state so if i am elected as a state youth pdc representative this year um i'd like to bring new ideas to the table for the historical times that we're going through right now. Thank you. Thanks, Alexis. Josie Kostick, are you on? Yes, I am. Um, hi, I'm Josie Kostick. Um, I am, sorry, hold on. <laughs> I've been in 4-H for, for nine to 10 years. Um, I am in ninth grade and I'm currently the vice president of my 4-H club. Um, I wanna run for PDC because I want to help make decisions. Um, just any, I just wanna help improve the 4-H horse program altogether. 
Um, I have a huge interest in the horse program, and I feel that I have a good understanding of the horse project. Thank you. Thank you. Emma Thompson, are you on? I don't hear Emma. Talking, but yeah. Oh, you're on, Emma? Did anyone hear Emma? She was talking, and now I see she's muted. Emma, I think you're muted. I unmuted her. So Emma, you can just start talking. We don't hear you, Emma. Yeah, you might, are you having computer issues? That could be. We can jump back to you, Emma, so keep, just keep working on it. If you don't get on, that's okay. Um, you can always put it. You can always put it in the chat to your introduction if you want to. If you're having computer issues, we don't we don't hold anybody accountable to computer issues right now because we we get it. So, Emma, if you just want to enter in the chat, you could do that, and then I can read it from the chat. All right. Let's see where. So that was it for Northeast. So Northeast, Northeast adults are Larray Schneider, Meg Sachs, and Susan, I butcher your last name, Shore. I know I'm doing that wrong again. Um, and Northeast youth are Alexis Shore, Josie Kostick, and Emma Thompson. So our last region is Northwest. Uh, Northwest for adults, we have Lori, I'm gonna butcher this last name too, Rigliano and Madison Flodine. And for youth, we have Jessica Miller and Madeline Brenda Mule. Uh, Lori, I know, was not able to be with us, so she sent in something, so I will read that. Lori is a lifelong horse owner, rider, enthusiast, and breeder of national champion horses. She is very active within the horse community and has held her horse judge's license as a USEF AHAR rated Arab Arabian horse judge for over 25 years. She has also held a National Horse Show Judges card. Lori is a published author and clinician for horsemanship and horse training. Her works have been published in weekly and monthly international equestrian and general reading publications, including the Arabian Horse Times Magazine. She currently writes a weekly equestrian column entitled Hoofbeats for a regionally syndicated newspaper. Lori also has a weekly worldwide equestrian podcast, Hoofbeats with, Hoof with Lori. Can't talk today that is on all the major podcast platforms, including iTunes, Google Play Store, Spotify, and Stitcher. Lori has operated horse training facilities in California, Colorado, and Minnesota. She has been a hunter jumper coach for the Conifer Colorado High School jumping team. While on the horse show circuit, in addition to her national level wins, Lori's students have garnered many national titles and awards. Lori took a few years off from training to pursue breeding her horses and traveling as an equine photographer, where she garnered international awards for her equine photography. In addition to traveling all over the United States, Lori has traveled worldwide, including the countries of Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay, Chile, and Canada, capturing the art of horse in these local locations on film. As a way to give back, Lori and her husband, Victor, started a nonprofit equine assisted therapy program, Hoof Beats for Healing. This model puts well-trained horses, equine specialists, and licensed counselors together working with clients needing assistance, dealing with trauma, anxiety, autism, and more. Lori and her husband started in 2019 um, the 4-H Equestrian Club Hoofbeats 4-H and are leaders of that club located in Wilkin County, Minnesota. Lori is also a certified firearms instructor specializing in teaching firearm safety. Lori is a motivational speaker on how horses heal trauma and empowering women. So that is Lori. Okay. Also running is Madison Flodine. Madison, are you on? Yeah. 
Yes, I am. Perfect. Um, so I apologize right off the bat if my microphone isn't great. I've been told it sounds like a cheese grater. So that's awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> so my name is Madison Flodine. I am currently attending NDSU. Um, I was in 4-H from kindergarten all the way up until 2019. That was my last year of being in 4-H. Um, I primarily participated in the pleasure events with my horse, but I've also participated in horse judging. Um, I was on a knowledgeable team for rabbits. I've done a bunch of stuff in 4-H. Um, I helped with the um, winter roundup. I helped with the boot camp. If you went to boot camp, hi, I missed you guys this year. Um, I really enjoy going to boot camp and I am also on the um, MQHA, so the Minnesota Quarter Horse Association um, Board of Directors for our region. I am originally from Douglas County, um, but currently with college, I'm in Fargo. Um, as far as helping youth in my county, um, Obviously with COVID, things have been challenging, um, but pre-COVID, I volunteered every Tuesday and helped give lessons for basic riding, showmanship, all the way into some more uh, finesseful pleasure events and things like that. Um, yeah, so that's who I am. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Madison. Um, those were the two adults. So for youth running are Jessica Miller and Madeline Brenda Mule. Jessica was not able to join us, so she sent me um, some information. So Jessica is a 10-year member of 4-H, riding before she could walk. Jessica has always had a special connection with horses. Coming from a family of equestrians and 4-H members, it was only natural she would want to become an active member within 4-H. Jessica enjoys learning as much as she can about horses and has attended clinics and events to further her knowledge. She has also competed in many horse shows, rodeos, and different divisions of equestrian activities from hunter pleasure to barrel racing. Jessica has been an active part of 4-H Leaders Council and enjoys introducing new people to the values of 4-H. Jessica likes to create static projects for fair, making them horse themed. It gives her the opportunity to share her love of the horse with everyone who sees her projects. Jessica has also been awarded three state trips where she competed with her horses with um, her other members of Wilkin County 4-H Project. Um, to continue her knowledge of working and training horses, Jessica is also a working student um, at Rigliano Farms Equestrian Center. There she learns how to care, train horses and prepare horses for various disciplines under a national tr level trainer and horse judge. Jessica is an active member of her local 4-H club, uh, Hoofbeats 4-H, where she is the president. So that is Jessica. Um, the other, sorry, I'm pulling this up here. Uh, Madeline, Brenda Mule, are you on? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Madeline Brenda Mule. I am from Clay County. I have been a 4-H'er for five years now and have been at, very active in the horse community, and I've been competing in knowledgeable hippology and other horse events through 4-H. I also have compete, comp competed in st other static projects too at the county level and at the state level, and I've had taken two horse trips, horse state fair trips to the state fair. I have been the secretary, the vice president, and I'm currently the president of my 4-H club. And I would, why well, would become a PDC representative would be to, to express my leadership skills and continue to serve the horse committee or the horse community. And I'm, oh, I'm willing to listen to to other whatever others have to say. I'm willing to put my input in for other ideas for for the horse community. And I'm willing to get the job done and I'm a very hard worker. Thank you. 
Great. Thank you very much. So that is your Northwest reps. Um, for adult is Lori Ricliano um, and Madison Flodine. For youth is Jessica Miller and Madeline Brenda Mule. So thank you, everybody. Emma, are you able still to hop on? Can you guys hear me? Yep, we can. Okay. So, <laughs> hi, my name's Emma Thompson. I'm in 11th grade. I am currently president of my 4 H club. Um, I served on the PDC last year and I loved it. I loved having a voice. I loved bringing back what we talked about at those meetings back to my club and bringing what my club, um, my club's input to those meetings as well. Um, one thing I would really love to incorporate as this social distancing virtual 4-H year continues is really getting club leaders involved like myself. I feel like we are taking all the responsibility on as a PDC when I feel like um, we have the opportunity to divvy that out. So maybe helping clubs reach out to their individual members who know them more, um, supporting clubs and um, in their ideas and maybe bringing them here. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I'm just glad my audio is working. So. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Emma. Oh, we're glad you could get connected. So um, again, I'm just going to jump back to the Northeast to keep it straight. And you will be able to vote in your region. Um, so Northeast adults, Lorraine Schneider, Meg Sachs, and Susan Shore. Sh I'm going to butcher it again. Shore. Um, youth are Josie Kostick, Alexa Shore, and Emma Thompson. So that is it for our candidates. So thank you all for presenting. It was nice. I know we got to hear a lot from all of the reps, even though you might not be able to be voting for all of them. I think it's still important um, that we hear from all of them. I'm going to jump back here. So just as a reminder, your Qualtrics ballot will go out to everyone who registered for this meeting. You will be asked to include your name, but it will be maintained confidential. You'll have until 10 o'clock tonight to vote through the ballot and the PDC reps will be announced tomorrow. Again, thank you to all of them. So we are gonna now break out into regional meetings. So if Renee? this works Renee? the way it's supposed to, oh, Dan, do you have a question? Yeah, uh, this is for Meg. I only got two rule changes to, for the region to consider. Was there more that I didn't get? Nope, there's only two. There's okay. only two. I didn't get any, I should say, so. Yeah, there was okay. only two, they arrived late yesterday afternoon. The actual deadline was the 1st of October. I got, I received those. I just didn't know if I missed another email with more. No, there was only two. Okay. With the lack of county fairs and activities, I think that really reflected on the rule book changes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yep, so Meg, I don't know if you wanna talk about them quick before they go into regional meetings, cause that might be something they wanna discuss. Yeah, I would say we should probably should go through them. Can you pull them up, Renee? Um, I should be able to. Hold on. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. You sent them to me, correct? Yes, I did. Okay, here's the first one. Do you want to discuss them, Meg, or do you want me to? No, I can go through them. Okay. Just give me a second here. This is the one change to Western Performance, page 33, headstall. Yeah. Yeah. I had it pulled up, and now I can't see it. How about if I start reading um, what the change is? So change to Western performance, page 33, head stalls number one. The change to read any Western head stall involving one ear, two ear, or brow band must uh, be used with a throat latch. The throat latch may be original or added or maybe a simple leather cord string or leather strap um, tied underneath the head stall from side to side to prevent the headstall from being displaced. 
Um, why should it be a change? That's a safety issue. A single ear head stall may easily be shaken off without the use of the added throat latch. This is especially dangerous in the speed events. The throat latch may be easily added by tying one side to the other underneath to prevent the head stall from coming off during competition. Um, when should the change become effective? The next 4-H uh, show season. And who is affected? Uh, Western performance section. That's one suggestion. Uh, Renee? Yep. Can you pull up the document that I sent, not the original? Oh, me, just one second here. Because that includes what the current rule is. I'm still looking here. Yes. This is the other, this is the other one. Um, we can scroll down to the other one. Yeah, we'll go with this one first, sorry. Yeah, the um, current rule reads, suitable Western head stalls must be used. One, two eared or brow band head stalls or other. A brow band must be used with a throat latch. And then we, Renee already read the pro, uh, proposed change, why it, should be changed, when it should be effective is next show, show year, and who would be affected, um, it would be Western performance riders. Yep, so that's one. The second rule change requ request. Yeah, the second one is regarding um, showmanship at halter uh, equipment for Western. The current rule is halter or leather, of leather or nylon webbing, chain on lead strap permitted, may be used over or under the nose. The proposed change is change on lead strap, strap permitted, may either be a, may be either a captive chain or used over the horse's nose. Chain not to be used under the horse's nose in a live fashion. Why it should be changed. Safety issue. When a chain is pulled or shanked, from under a horse's nose in a live situation, it can cause the horse to rear up and become uncontrollable. A captive chain under the nose, meaning it clips to itself, does not give the same upward jerk. A chain over the nose controls the horse and keeps it on its feet like a captive chain. Much safer for handler and horse. Again, when should it be effective next show year and who would be affected showmanship at halter participants? And those are both of the changes that were proposed. So those are the two um, proposed rule changes that you can discuss in your regional breakouts. Questions on those? Uh, Leah had a question in chat. Okay. What does live mean? Just want to clarify. Um, my assumption by live is when you're actually showing. Right, that's my assumption too. Can I just ask a clarification on that chain as well? Since most of our children show with showmanship halters that are meant to have the chains under the nose, I mean, has it been taken into consideration how that's going to affect the horse now to put that over the nose? Because it's a very different reaction and with all the others showing our children do, that chain has to be under the nose. So um, I, think, I agree. I think those are discussions that you can have on your regional. Um, and the reason you want to discuss these on your regional breakouts is because your state PDC reps, um, whoever they are that will be elected, will be discussing these to make a, a decision on them at the November state PDC meeting. So at, in your breakout rooms is the time for you to provide that discussion and feedback and your opinions so that you can form um, what your recommendations are. Does that make sense? Yeah. Renee? Yes. Um, 
I actually contacted Rayanne about this one in particular. So perhaps if Rayanne can explain a little bit about this as well. Yes, I can do that if you like. Um, so I think just looking at, at the proposal, um, Lori has a Arabian background and in regards to the lead shank, it has become a, a fairly common practice and I'm gonna say this is primarily um, with the professional trainers and, and uh, adults showing to use what we call a captive chain. In other words, it doesn't sit against the jaw. And if some of you can kind of imagine in your head what an Arabian show halter looks like and it, the chain goes um, through both sides and then comes down to the lead. Well, instead of letting it sit on the jaw, it's put inside the lead so there's no constant pressure on that jaw. So I believe that's where she's coming from. Um, having thought about that a little bit, I'm not sure where, how that would really work very well with a, a lead shank um, that has the chain attached to it because the Arabian uh, equipment is the, the chain is separate from the lead so it's easy to do that. But with a, a lead shank that is the chain is attached to the leather lead, which is the stock type halters are. Um, doing a capture would be fun, so you'd have to go to a different lead. Um, so then that would leave you on the option to put the chain to the nose. So that, that's what that part is. The other part I believe is, and she talked about Western performance, but she also uh, talked about games. Well, I think most of the game horses probably don't use a one ear. Um, but anyway, um, we see on the, uh, again, primarily the Arabian horses because their heads are a little smaller. So those uh, bridles want to slip a little easier. So they'll, they'll take like a small um, nylon cord or a, like a uh, shoe leather string and they'll tie from kind of right below the eye or depending on what the horse's head is shaped like around to the other side and fasten that on the other side so that the head stall can't slip off the head. So I believe that's where she's coming from. I just wanted to maybe clarify that for you guys a little bit, um, knowing that that's, that's her background and knowing that that is what's common in the Arabian community, but I don't know that it it filters through all, <laughs> all breeds, so. Okay, thank you. Um, I do want to just because of time constraints, I do want to move us to breakout meetings fairly quickly here. Um, Amy, did you have a couple other questions that need to be addressed? Um, yes, yeah, somebody was asking is Western Performance Games only correct only? Western Performance are your performance classes. So Western Pleasure and those type, not games. Okay, and then um, somebody has a question on the PDC reps. When does their time expire? Aren't the new reps we are voting on effective January 1, 21? So the, no, um, that changed. That changed, the whole system changed when we moved to October elections. So it'll actually start, the elections happen in October um, and they take over in November. Okay, and then one more question. A throat latch is already required, is it not? No. It's, it is, it, Uh, it depends on what you're showing in. Um, That's correct. It depends on what you're showing in. So what you need to read the specific requirements for your, the specific area that you're showing in. So it totally depends on what you're showing in. Somebody said it's only with a brawl band. It depends on what you're showing in. In that current rule, it was only required with a brow, brow band in the current rule that we were talking about. Um, but you need to read the specific requirements for each of the different classes and the requirements for um, equipment. So another question is, what are they wanting to add throat latch to? Games or pleasure or both? Performance, pleasure, Western performance, she said. And you can discuss that more in your regional meeting. Other ones?
Okay, so we are going to click and move you to breakout rooms um, in a minute here. I'm just going to give you a heads up as to how we'll be moving. So breakout room one will be northwest. So if you are in one of the counties listed here, you'll go to breakout room one. So when we click the button, you will all have an option to choose a breakout room to go to. So Ready? breakout room number one will be northwest. Breakout room two will be northeast. And these Renee, are the somebody, Renee, somebody's trying to ask you a question. Renee, I just I'm I just had a discussion with Shannon Mark. Most of the show bridles out there do not have a throat latch. For correct, like correct. the quarter horse, everything else. And so we have to find a way to connect a throat latch. No, nope, this no, is discussion. Passed. This rule has not passed. Okay. This is this rule is up for discussion. So that is a point you'll want to bring out in your regional meetings. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Breakout, you're welcome. Breakout two is Northeast. Breakout room three is Central. Anoka, Benton, Carver, Chisago, Dakota, Hennepin, Isani, McLeod, Meeker, Ramsey, Scott, Sherburn, Stearns, Wright, and Washington counties. Breakout room four is Southwest. And breakout room five is Southeast. Your current PDC reps will be hosting or kind of having the question answer and discussion part of these meetings as you move into those. Once those regional meetings are, are finished or yours is done, some may go longer, some may be shorter, then you can just choose to leave the meeting. If by chance you jump into a breakout room that is not yours, you should have the option, I think it's on the bottom of your screen that will say leave room. Don't choose to leave the meeting or you will be totally out. If you choose to leave the room, you'll put you back in the main one and then you can reselect. Make sense? Renee, Renee you, Olmstead you, is in what region? Olmstead is in break, whoops, um, breakout Southwest. room five, Southeast. Southeast. When you were reading the counties, you were still showing the room change. So your lists were not showing if you were intending to do that. Yeah. So oh, can you see breakout room one? No. 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 We see the rule change yet. The rule change. Oh, 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 oh hold on. Let me stop sharing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, um, I have to reshare. Back to there now, can you? Yep. Okay. Yes, so, thank you. Sorry. Breakout room one. It said I was sharing my screen, but I was sharing a different screen. Um, breakout room one is Northwest. Those are the counties. Breakout room two is Northeast. Those are the counties. Breakout room three is Central. Breakout room four is Southwest. And breakout room five is Southeast region. 